Hi guys, very good morning. A very warm welcome to HTM Cubits workshop. HTM Cubits is a series of workshops by Hack the Mountains. Cubits means quantum bits, just like small quantums of packets of memory of the whole information. In the same way, these series of workshops would make you a tech geek at the end. These workshops started from 20th September and will last till 9th October. So, are you ready for this? So, what would you get by attending these workshops? Learning and experience sharing by industry professionals, rewards for participants during the workshops, and e certificates to all the participants. To get the e certificate, please fill the form that we provide you in the chat. So, coming to today's session, have you ever heard of Power Apps? Power Apps is a suite of apps, services, connectors, and data platforms that provides a rapid application development environment to build custom apps for your business needs. So, in this workshop, we are going to learn about Power Apps. So, for this, we have our speaker, Davda Idrishu. He is currently a software developer at Bezo Money. He is also a Microsoft Gold Student Ambassador Program member and he has a great knowledge about backend technologies as well as he is also a technical trainer. So welcome sir, very pleased to have you here. So let's start our session, empower yourself with Power Apps. Over to you. Okay, um, so amazing. My screen is going to be shared soon um, by the team. Um, for now, do not mind about the many things you are seeing here. It's just a way that I you would connect with you. Um, like it's rightly mentioned, my name is Dawood Idris, and I'm a software developer. I work for a company called Bezumani um, as a software lead, um, which means the CTO as well. And um, so basically what we try to do, what we do, is that we help people, you know, uh, make more money by saving. And we have a very good technique to help them. Um, aside that, I'm also a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional. And um, I'm, as well, a Learn Ambassador, a good Learn Ambassador. Um, so if you would like to learn more about myself, you can go to Dawood Idris, just this name, .com. You would uh, find my website being live. And if you would want to see some of the cool videos I have for you too, you can come here and then um, check up on that. Um, lastly, if you would want to also go on a channel that has huge amount of you know resources for you, just make sure to type this word into YouTube, and then it will quickly load up this channel, which has about ninety-one videos currently um, up and running to help you uh, on your journey as a software developer. And um, yeah, those are a bit about me. So I love doing, you know, a lot of, you know, um, back end development. Now, the prob the point is that, okay, I mean, with everything I like to do, um, why do I, you know, what am, why am I here? Why am I here in the first place? What do I have to share with you? Um, so I have tons of resources. Um, the point is that um, when you get started, even in Hackathon, so when I heard about this Hackathon, I was like, you know, this is really a great idea. And this is really a great place to show people the power of power apps. Um, the reason being that you are you are soon going to be like, you know, um, you have the idea, you figured out what you want to build, you wish you could actually get to the middle part of your solution. Like, I mean, coding it, but time wouldn't permit you to be able to do that, right? So if you had like a little, you know, help, um, that would really be cool, right? So I, I see that within Hackathon, um, many people might design their prototype with Adobe XD or Figma. And once they are done designing with Figma, they might you know, have only the prototype, right? Now they have to convert it to um, something like you know, um, um, the actual application, which they might you know, uh, fall short of uh, because they'll need to figure out how do I you know, connect to this API? And then how do I... Um, move this thing around. How do I add the feature so that it's able to scan for, you know, barcode, barcode reader? How do I embed AI into this solution? So all those things within, you know, shortest possible time. Honestly, it is not really like, I mean, it's stressful and not really achievable. So 
um, with Microsoft Power Apps, uh, it's a platform called Low Code, No Code Environment uh, platform, which allows you to be able to build application rapidly um, so that you have, you know, up and running app. Okay, and it can be shared with people. You don't, if you, so you can build a web application, mobile application, and a lot more. Okay, so you can build, you know, whether it's a tablet app, a web app, mobile app, it can, you know, fit into that. Now, the cool thing is that if you've used Visual Basic before, or uh, yeah, you will see that Visual Basic came with a drag and drop interface, which made things kind of good. Now, Power Apps is even more, you know, easier than um, um, going on, um, I mean, um, going with uh, um, Visual Basic. So it's really built for people who are new to software development and really want to create something. So people are really changing lives with, you know, Power Apps. So um, let's dive deep, deeper on how exactly and what Power Apps can help you. So one thing you need to know is that it comes with a drag and drop interface. Um, it has a bunch of templates to get you started. It has a huge community that you can belong to. So, uh, and then if you want more videos, you can visit this particular URL. All those will be shared with you, um, which is videos that people have created, how to scan, receive, and then all those stuff. So it's kind of cool stuff to get you started. And um, maybe you, you will ask me, do, do I need lenses for this um, session? Uh, like, you know, to be able to create Power Apps? Yes, you need, to, you know, lenses. If you have Office 365 um, um, lenses, um, it comes along with Power Apps and the Power Platform tools, uh, Power Automate and Power BI and other things, which we might not mention here. So yeah, you, you can also come here, this link, and then sign up for a community edition, edition so that community plan that can allow you to just you know start for free and it will help you in this hackathon um lastly you can also become like a learn ambassador to get started so why don't we dive deeper than hearing that we we'll talk all the time so um let's get into it so to start with power apps you just need to go to make.powerapps.com um first of all you know, you need to sign up for Office 365 account. So um, go to office365.com and then sign up. But because you are going to try it, you can just visit the um, community plan um, to sign up. And once you are done and then you have access, you can then log in with that email that you used to sign up. And that email would sign you into the Power Apps portal. Now, when you get into the Power Apps um, environment, you can see how it looks like, okay? Um, it allows you to build um, three applications, okay? One is called Canvas app from blank, one is model driven app from blank, and one is called Portal from blank. Today, we're gonna be focused on this particular one. And I'm sure once I end up with you, you'll be able to be up and running. Um, let me scroll up a bit, is that you can also hmm, use SQL as your data source you can use Excel, you can use tons of connectors um, as your, your data source and you'll be very good to go, okay? And even if you need some, you know, to access, I don't know, maybe using people being, um, extracting some data from Twitter and all those stuff, you can do all those stuff with clicks. Okay, so now let me just show you, we have home, we have learn, we have apps, we have data source, we have flows, we have chatbots, we have AI builder, which means you can even build AI solutions into Power Apps. All right, let's not just keep talking. Let's click on Create. Okay, so when I click on Create, you can see that it says that start from blank, model driven, portal, and all this stuff. I mean, those are really, really cool. Okay, you can do any. When I click on Apps, it will show me all the apps that I've created under my you know, organization. So these are some cool applications that I've created. And I can also click here and then just say that I need a new app. I need a new app, um, Canvas app. So that's also possible. So let's click on create. And I'll click on Canvas app from blank. Okay. And I'll choose that, hey, I need to create a new application. This new application we are going to build. So let's consider a scenario. Say we want to build a tax application. Um, smart task. Okay, so this would help us to quickly add tasks on like the usual things that we'll do. 
I will select that I want the format to be a phone, like, you know, a mobile application I'm trying to build. I'll click on create. Um, and I'll, it will just take some few minutes, but I'm going to be set up um, within some short and possible time. So what it's going to do is to try to open the Power Apps portal for me um, to be able to create my application. So let's see what is actually I can do from there. By the way, if you have any question, put it in the chat. I would get to it and answer it very quickly. Okay. Yeah, here we go. So you can see that already I have an up and running application. Let me preview this application. Okay, it's pretty empty. There's nothing on it. All right, that's cool. That's screen one. I can rename this screen, I don't know, to something else. I can rename it. So let's imagine that I want to rename this screen to um, splash screen. Okay, splash. Okay. Cool. So I think this is how I spell it. All right. Then right off from that, every developer will be looking at what is the insert but uh, you know tab looking at view action. What are they all communicating to me? Right. Um, so. Let's assume that this, when it's launch, it will tell the, it will welcome the user, and then it will go ahead and then you know um, show all the sweet stuff about Power Apps to the user. Okay, so very quickly, I'm going to choose a theme. So a theme that should make my application nicer. I will choose that. I think I'll come back to it in some few minutes. So now let's go to insert. Click on you know say we want to add a test um, that would welcome our um, Users. So I'll click on test. I'll click on you know label, and I will drop that label inside my you know uh, app. And over here, once I drop it, see here at the see here at the right side of my screen it says that test. Okay, because whatever is shown here is saying test. So I'll go to this properties and I'll change it to welcome. Or should we give it the name of our app? So task um, smart apps. Okay. And I will choose whatever I want it to be. The font size, the font type can be changed. Everything you need can be changed here. And if you want to increase it a bit, you can also increase it, say 30. OK, so it's increased. And if you want to make it somehow bold, yes, you can say that you want semi-bold. It depends on you. And when you scroll down a bit, you can go down more. And then let's see. Yeah, I think this works for me. OK, this works for me. And if you want to adjust that it's aligned to the center, you can do that as well. So you can see right now we are building an app without needing to learn any specific language over here. Right? So see how it's working. So we have a smart task app. Let's add some controls to it. Let's add some few things. Say when a person visits this app, he sees an icon. The icon would, you know, have like um, uh, an option that would say that go to the next, you know, page or something. So let's click there. So this is the icon. I'm going to drag it. I'm going to expand it a bit and I'm going to pull it off and then I don't know whether this would be a nice experience for the user or not. I mean, it entirely depends on you. You are the developer. How do you want your application to be like? So, so I don't know. Let's put it here. OK. Now, when someone visits this app, he's going to see this button. When he clicks on it, it will, I don't know, maybe kind of open the next page for the person. OK. Now, how do we do that? Which means we need another screen, right? So. I'm just going to click on here. I'll click here and I'll say that I want to add a new screen and the screen is going to be blank. OK, I've clicked on it and this page might be the page that allows the users to be able to um, I maybe add new tasks. So add task screen. So let's, you know, um, add screen, the web screen to all the um, all our screens so that it differentiates the screens and the controls. Okay, 
now that we have another screen, let's see. Imagine that we want to just come here. We have a smart task app over here. We want to add, you know, some fields. For example, we want to add, you know, the tax name, the tax description, and then some pattern. Let's go add that. We click on the top part here. I'll click on um, label. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, let's go do that. I'll click on label and I will drag my label. Um, you know what? Before I do that, let me do this. Um, when you check over here, um, let me scroll down a bit. See, okay, you can see forms, okay? So these forms basically um, would allow you to put up, you know, form controls on that particular, you know, form. So I'm going to click on forms. Okay. And when I click on forms, um, I think I should click that. This is going to be a edit form. Okay. So, yeah, this would have like, you know, let me just expand it. Okay. So take it like, you know, an actual form that you know. Okay. Just form. Forms that you know as a developer. Okay. Um, so um, this form would allow users to be able to put like, you know, controls on that particular on this uh, form, they get the idea. So let's go see that what, what are some of the fields that I will need on my form. Um, let me click on here, click on add a custom card. Um, so one thing is that you need to connect to a database, okay? So you need to figure out, hey, how do I want my database to look like, okay? Something like that. You need to figure that out, okay? So um, maybe you have SQL or even you have like Excel file that you want to figure out that, okay, users should be able to add, you know, um, maybe name, description, and then they should be able to add whether the tax is completed or not. So maybe completed field. Um, I mean, all this depends. And you know, this is just, this is Excel. Um, so you can do whatever you want with it. Let me go see what, uh -huh. let me just expand the description field. And also now Power Apps would want you to do some quick things. For example, you see this, um, they are just name, description, completed. Yeah, they are just fields. So you need to convert this to a table. So I'll click in here and I'll press Control A to highlight all the you know active fields. And then I will come over here. Uh, I think before I do that, let's do let's do um, let's call this one. I don't know, maybe task name. Okay. Um, let me drag this as well so that it becomes like, you know, also at least, yeah, it comes neat. So I'll click on any of this cell and I'll press Control A and I'll click on uh, format as a table and I'll click what particular table format would I want, like any of this team would do. I think I like block stuff too, so I'll click that. And you can see when I click on format as a table, it asks me that my table has edits. I'll click on check. So that the tax name, the description, and completed are uh, what my table head is. Then I'll click on OK. All right. So this has been converted to an Excel, you know, table. All right. So let's just just go. Let's go do this. I'll press Control S, and then when I press Control S, I'm going to save this into my OneDrive account. Okay. Um. So under my OneDrive account, let's click there. Cool. Um, I would save this inside um, a folder. Um, the folder, I think I should just save it anywhere. Oh, what do I think? Yeah. Um, so I have my OneDrive documents. Okay, so OneDrive, um, it will be stored in my OneDrive documents. Okay, so let's click on, let's give it a name. So this is going to be my tags. And um, yeah. Okay, so I'll click on save. Now, one thing I need to show you again is that when you click inside any of this table, okay, it's saving, it's saving, right, it's saving. When you click any of this cell, like any of this table, you will see that the table design um, tab is activated. I'll click on the table design and you can see that it has table name. 
So this is going to be like your database table name. So I'm going to call this, you know, um, tasks. Okay. And maybe I'll use some um, small t over there because I know programmers like to name it, you know, with smaller t. I'll click on Control S to save, you know, but because it's in my OneDrive, it will auto save for me. But, you know, as programmers, we always fall back to doing it our own way. So I'm just going to click on, you know, closing this particular um, Excel sheet because I'm done with it. Cool. Now I need to connect this Excel sheet with my Power Apps. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to click on Data Source. Okay. Um, it will allow me to connect to data source. But first of all, all that I'm going to do is that this particular application, I'm going to click, you see here has plus icon. Here has, you know, data. So here is where I'll connect to that particular data source, okay? So I'll click on data and I'll click on that I want connectors. And among the connectors, I'll look for OneDrive. Um, yeah, OneDrive for business, because that is where I stored my data and I'll click on OneDrive for business. Okay, you see that? It would then open my OneDrive for business um, folder, um, all the directories there. And you remember we stored our file under document. So I'm just gonna scroll a bit, 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 bit. Let's see whether we have documents somewhere. Hey, where did you store all this stuff that I just created? I think it was in, let's go check that again. Let's go check that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, I, I'm not finding it, um, but was it in attachments? I don't think so. I think I called it task, right? Let's see what I, if I search for task. I'm not seeing that as well. Okay, so why don't we go store it one one more time? Like I'll click on Excel, it opens up my Excel, and then I would select that I want the most recent one, which is tax. Um, let's go click that part. Okay, or better still, what you can do is to, hmm, okay, just a second, just a second. Let me make sure I'm, I'm getting where is that I stop this file. So I can save a copy. I can save the copy to my OneDrive um, Student Ambassador account. And under that, okay, I can see that, no way, go back. Okay, I can see that I have some sort of folders over here. And by the way, let me put it inside this global AI, you know, stuff. And then I'll click on save. So I need to just quickly talk to you guys about global AI. So there's a bootcamp coming up in two days time. You might want to check up if you want to add, you know, um, what's the name? If you want to add AI to your solution, you might want to check it up. Um, so there'll be experts to show you how you can do all this stuff. So you can see that now I have, you know, um, the tax um, table, the tax Excel sheet in my, account i'll click on it and you can see it comes along with the tax table that we selected so i'll click on connect okay so right now our application is sort of connected to a onedrive you know ex an excel sheet within our onedrive so at least we have a database and we have a table we are selecting from okay cool now that we are, you know, we have a data source to our application, let's go ahead and then, you know, go back to customizing our application, then look and fill however we want it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to this forms and I'll click that I want to select the data source. The data source I want to select is the table that we just added. Okay, so the tax table is being selected. I can now click on edit field. When I click on edit field, it's going to show me all the, you know, the fields that are within my, so I'll click on add field. And you can see that it searches within the table, all the columns like tax name, description are all, you know, selected for me. I'll just click on only those ones and I'll click on add. Cool. It's going to take some few seconds and you can see that it populates all my, um, my form with 
tax name and description. Now let's get back to it. I think I don't like how the description is being displayed. So I'll scroll down and you see over here, it says that edit test, right? Fine, I mean, that's fine with me, but I would scroll and then I'll use the edit rich test, okay? So that people can make it bolder, can make it whatever they want. They can customize it that way. Cool. Now see here, I have an app. I can preview this app. And when I preview the app, we don't see the items showing up. So I can click on advanced um, properties. Let's come here, click on the, uh, 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 sorry, the form again. Let's go back to the form again. And when we click on the form, I might as well just want to say that, hey, um, show me all the things that I have within my um, form. So I'll click on new. It should show me all the, the default mode is that this is going to be new. I'll click on it. Click on preview one, one more time. Okay. And I have tax name. I have description. So I can add the tax name, say, go to school. And I can say that the description is going to be come home early. Okay. Our app is not the most beautiful app in the world. I think even the, um, the team doesn't really look okay. But for now, let me do this. So what we can do is that we can click on icons so that when someone, or even a button, yeah, I think programmers would usually use button button. So we can click on button and I'll add the button to this particular application so that when someone is done, you can click on create. So I'll click on create. Okay. All right, then I would have, you know, basically everything figured out. And what's this? What's this? Okay. I think I have some unnecessary field I would have to remove. But so then I can click on my app one more time. And whilst I am on the home tab, I can click on this little drop down button and I'll click on team. And when I click on team, I would see the different teams. This team look like Microsoft Office. Let's go select that. Okay, now our app is starting to look beautiful. That's right. So let's go back again. We have a splash screen, which pops up this way. And when we click on the this icon, what we want to do is that whenever this icon is selected, it should open our add task screen for us. So um, you see the um, event is that it says that, um, Let's go to here. Okay. So the event says that whilst we are on our home tab, when I select on this, on select, I want it to navigate me to a new, um, I'll click on the action and I'll say that it should navigate to somewhere else. Okay. So which it should navigate to the add task screen for me. And this is the transition that would happen. Let's go do that. Let's preview this app again. Let's click on here. And you can see it opens up that we should add task. And um, I mean, we can, once we are done adding the task, we can click on create and it will do that for us. Okay, so on this particular um, create uh, button, I would say that once it is done, like once someone clicks on it, what should it do? Okay, let's go check up on the advanced feature. Let's click on select. Um, so when this is selected, then it should submit this form for us, the form one that we added over here. Let me show you what I mean. This form one, you know, all the controls are added on it. So it should select that form for us. Okay. So it should submit this particular form. Okay. Um, so let's go check up once again what all these you know tools are doing. Now there's an, a very easy way to go about all this, but I started this way because I know programmers would like to feel the look and feel of you know programming over there. So let's do it that way, and then quickly we can switch to seeing how what does Power Apps even offer? Like what is the better thing that it can even add for you instead of doing all this by yourself? So you can see the data field says tax. And then you see, um, because we add tax name with space, 
um, Power Apps has encoded it and added so that um, this field would be recognized very well. The display name is tax name. Um, it's required. And I think that's about it. Uh, that's about it, yeah. Um, let's go check up on here. You can customize it more, whatever you want it to be, you can do that, okay? And yeah, I think we are basically getting there um, where our app is becoming beautiful. Let's add some simple text over there and say that, um, okay, unlock and add um, any item. So let's go do this. Let's click on, I think an item has been added to our app. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me check what is happening. Okay, uh, I think a custom. So on our form, now we have a data field. Did we need this data field? Let's delete it and see. Okay, it's gone. Then let's open to our tax data name let me open it up and there's a label that came over there let's delete it as well we don't need it over there okay cool and so with this in mind i think we can then scroll and then say that whilst we are there we want to just add a label okay Okay, cool. So the label is going to fall. So the label we are going to say that it should basically um, create. Yeah, let's go change the test over there. Say create. Text. Okay, I've done that. I would make this, you know, a bit bolder, semi bold. And I do not know whether it really became bold or not. But yeah. I would increase the size to somewhere around 35. Click on it. And I will change from today UI semi bold to say that it should be bold. Let's see. Okay. And whatever that you want it to be is entirely up to you. You can keep customizing it. We don't have much to do over here. Okay. So now let's look at it again. We can preview our app. Someone says go to school, says come home early want to even make this better okay come on early and click on create then it's going to try to save this to our excel onedrive account okay once it is done it will be saved successfully and then we can go check up our data how does it look like something like that all right i see cool um basically we would have one or two more things to do but i wanted you to feel what exactly um our apps can offer you, okay? So this is the first part of it. Now the second part of it is that we are going to take very, like, I mean, few minutes, like seconds to um, get everything done from A to Z, okay? So see, all the things that we were adding has been added. We added one tax, it says go to school, and then we said that the description should be come home, and the completed field was actually left empty, and it generated an ID to hold that particular field. So kind of like your general tables, you see it has like a unique ID field. So Power Apps also generates unique ID um, for each record that you've entered into your database, okay? So that was fun. I know you have seen that you can use Power Apps in your solution. When it was done creating, we could have said that when it's done creating, it should navigate us back to, um, you know, um, maybe the, the home page or something. So that is also possible. Let's do some quick one. And then I think we will um, end it basically over there. So I'm just going to add a, another screen. This screen is going to be called the browse screen. Okay. Um, so what we are going to do is that maybe we are just going to click on, uh, let's just say, let's see, let's see which one do we select. Let's click on blank one more time. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so it's added a blank one for us over there. So we have a screen. Let's go add something to this particular screen. So I will click on this and I can see gallery. So I'll add gallery. So basically the gallery I'm going to add is going to be, um, it is asking me what kind of gallery would I, would I want to add? Let me click that blank vertical. 
gallery should be added. Okay. All right. So now what this means is that this is also looking forward that, okay, populate this with your data source, right? So that all the things that you want, I mean, the records you have would be displayed in here for you. That's what it's saying. So we can scroll up, scroll up a bit, scroll down, drag it down, and then I will preview this. Okay, it looks empty. So what we basically want to tell it is that when this gallery is being loaded, we want you to um, select the data source and display all of them for us. So let's go see. It says that on select, um, it should, I don't know, if this is selected, I think I might have missed it a bit, but basically the gallery would help us to display um, all the items that is being saved into our database for us. So here as well, we can rename this. Uh, we can rename this and then we will call it that display or display our, I don't know, maybe display screen or our task screen. I don't know, however you've been, you know, the name and convention that you've been using for your um, stuff, you can still use it here, like in your actual programming, you can use it here. Okay, so this is a little bit of, I mean, it's gonna be a little bit tougher for people who are not programmers to stop thinking whether Power Apps is a thing for them or not. Because can they really, you know, do all this stuff? I know for programmers, you are very cool with this. This is your best thing that you would ever do. Because when I'm even doing Power Apps, I want to, I, I want to feel like I'm doing something. Like, because <laughs> it gives me so much flexibility to do it easier way. So let's get started on how exactly we can do this a better way. But for now, this is what we built. We built an app. The app can, you know, open up the crates um, form for us. And basically, if we have everything figured out, we can click on crates, and this would have done that for us. Um, one thing you need to know is that when you open Power Apps, um, the data would not be able to read um, very well. So you need to make sure that um, your Power Apps, um, your Excel sheet, or your data source is being closed, especially when you are using Excel. So click on reload. Okay. Whoops. Is it reloading? Oh, looks like I basically closed the app we were building. It's okay. It's fine. So that was, you know, a bit of power apps for you. Now let's look at the, you know, what is the, the like the big deal? What's the easiest way that we've been talking about in terms of um, um, power apps? So now, uh, when you go to make.powerapps.com, when you scroll down, you can see that it says that um, these are all templates. These are like good templates for you to start with. So maybe you want to build an app, but you don't want to do it everything by yourself. So you basically want to click on, maybe it's a help desk that would help or onboarding tax that would, you know, help to onboard people. Uh, budget tracking app that would, you know, help you. You can click on any of them and then it will quickly open up this particular um you know template for you you can name this template however you want it to be and you can see the data source it is going to use is what um the office um data source so let's go click on there let's give this one a name what is this supposed to be i think we'll call it once again smart help desk um if you have any question you can put it in the chat um Fox are gonna ask me and I'm gonna answer you. I just want to make sure that this is going great for you. So we looked at the first part where if you're a programmer and you want to build, you know, on power apps, I want you to feel like you know all the builds that you used to do, you can do them within power apps. So that's the first part. Now the second part is that you can start with you know templates. Okay, yeah, I will say allow. You should allow it to connect to my OneDrive. Um my office 365 account okay and you can see basically it has quickly um just created you know from the template all the screens have been set up for us so basically we can preview this and see how it looks like let's click on it okay so this is an actual app with you know a lady smiling at the background and it allows you to log in as a help desk user or log in as a desk administrator i'll click on login as help desk user 
And you can see it has this pretty nice interface for me. Then I can click on add. Um, so basically what I'm trying to do is to add some, you know, um, create a ticket so that I can be helped. Say, fix my eyes. I'm joking, by the way. Uh, that's going to be, let's say, laptop. It's high priority. Um, or they can, you know, respond in four days. And I'll say, please fix my... laptop camera okay i'll click on create and this is going to create you see it brings you this is like an, a, a very good experience of you know using uh, power apps so it has created that for me now your help desk ticket has been submitted okay let's go back let's log in one more time click on login as help desk and you can see that i said fix my eyes and it has displayed here and I can click on edit to edit this. I can delete it and all those stuff. I can click and add more of it. So this is really cool. And with templates, it's just like reading someone else's code. It helps you to understand, okay, what are some of the things that I could have added to my Power Apps to make great um, as a beginner? All those stuff you can see when you click on, this is the gallery. It will show you how the data source was connected. It says that on select, you should select um, tickets um, this item. So if this is the table that is connecting and then selecting this item and all that, that's like really, really cool stuff over here for you. So this is a second option on how to explore power apps. Now let's look at the last one since I'm running out of time now. Um, let's close this. Leave. Cool. And you can also notice that what it did is that it logged me in with my account. Okay, so anytime I log in, I can see that, you know, the help desk app that I created, my data is stored in there and then ticket was submitted. Okay, now let's go back to here. Say I want to build an app. I want to build, you know, an app and I want to build a Canvas app. I mean, the drag and drop and then all the interfaces that I showed you. But I have a data source, okay, which is sitting in my OneDrive. Um, yeah. So I'll click on phone layout. I have an Excel sheet somewhere else. Now the Excel sheet is going to be maybe inside my Ignite folder. Um, okay, this is flooring estimates. Let's go back. Okay, I think, sorry. Let's, let's just go back to that. Um, inside, so I'll just look for where I have like kind of a cool um, thing to show you. So let's go back again, Power Staff. So I'll scroll to the Power Staff folder and I have tax, you know, Excel drive over here again. I'll click on task and I'll click on connect. Okay, so now notice the three things I did. The first one, I went to the portal and I selected a blank screen and I was creating it myself. The second one, I used template. And the third one is that I have selected that I, I have a data source that I want to start from. So see, with the power of Power Apps, it is using artificial intelligence to map all the, you know, the, the table data and all this stuff to come up with a very good three screen experience for me. So right now, I'm creating an app over here. Look at it. I will preview this app. Okay, it says here to school, I don't think so. And it gives me an option to add a new field. So for example, completed, set it to true, description is going to be nice stuff and name is going to be um comment i will click on select i mean check and this would be added to my data source so see i've just added you know another one over here okay maybe i do not want this i can then view this like you know a view option and i can click on delete to delete it entirely from there so look at it all the things that we did from the beginning, the first experience, we are doing it again. By then, we are not starting with a blank screen. We are telling Power Apps, hey, I have a data source. Go ahead and you know figure out all the fields that I have within there and then you know display the table, give me a create screen, detail screen, and all this stuff. Okay, now let's look at what exactly can we do to change the field of this app. Once again, I'll click on this 
little drop down and I'll click on um, the team. Okay. When I click on the team, it will ask me to select a team that I like. Once again, I can click on the orange to make it look like Office app. Um, cool. Immediately, what is going to happen is that all my you know controls are going to adjust to this particular team. Cool. Now, let me show you one more thing, which means that when we come back to the browse screen, okay, in this browse screen, the browse gallery, let's scroll down and see what we have over there. So see, we have completed, we have task, we have name, we have completed. So what is happening is that it is basically displaying all the um, fields that we have within our Excel table. And it is searching within this table called task. And it is searching um, on the test, um, you know, it's displaying everything with the test search box. So when whatever you type inside, um, this, let me minimize it. Whatever you type inside this search um, text box dot test, whatever you type in there, it's selected. Um, let's go back to there. And it is looking at all the fields, um, like completed description and name. Whatever you type in there, it tries to see whether it can match it up. And then um, it's sorting it by completed. Okay, maybe you don't want it to be sorted by completed. You want it to be sorted by the name. So you can just change it and say name. So it should be sorted by the name. Okay, cool. Now let's go down, preview this app one more time. And then let's search and say that um, here, we can see that it has quickly searched on here for us. And it is searching and sorting it by, you know, the order of the, the name field. So don't think so is the word. So don't, you can see that it is searching all the fields and it is matching it up for me. I can then edit this and say that completed is false. I'll click on check. I'll click on check. And once I'm done, I would have, so this is a beautiful app that is like kind of created for me. One more thing that I want to show you is this. Um, let's preview this app again. Okay. And you can see that maybe the way it is displayed, you don't like it. So what we can do basically is that we can come to the advanced tab and then inside the advanced, uh, let's go to the properties. Let's click on the browse gallery one more time. And then you can see that the layout is, so, is, show, is using some specific you know, layout for us. Let's click on the layout. And you can see that you can also, if you have images, you can display the images side by side of your tax. Um, so I'll click on image title, image title and description. So I really have title and description, so I can click on image title and description. So I'll click on that. And you can see that it is turning this to look like, you know, I have an image, like an actual image that will be displayed. So see, this looks super, super cool on whatever you want to do. So I'll click on here, click on don't think so. And then you can see basically I have all the cool stuff. Now the last thing I'll just do for us to end this session is that I'm going to add a splash screen, um, you know, to the app so that that would be, you know, our start screen. So I'll click on blank. Oh yeah, I'll click on blank through. Let's click on blank. And when I click on blank, I'm going to add the same thing that I added. But this time around, I'm going to the insert tab. I'm going to say that, hey, I need to add a test. And the test I'm going to add is just going to be a label. And yeah, let's go add the label. Scroll down. And the label is going to say that, uh, let's go do this quickly. So I'm going to say that next, cool. And I'm going to say that the layout should be at the center and that I need an icon over there to, um, let's go back here, click on icon. And the icon I need is going to still be the next, you know, item, like the next icon. So scroll and you can see the next, I will put the next icon inside my uh, like beside my nest um label 
let me increase my label a bit to cover up everything. And I'll preview this one more time. Okay, looks like person can see Nest. Now let's add a quick test to it. I'll click on Nest uh, label, and then I will then select that. Hey there. Uh, I don't think this is a nice experience. However, that would do. Okay, so I don't know whether we should um, drag it to the other side. Okay, all right, let's see. Hey there, um, and then it has next. Is this a good user experience? It's entirely up to you. Then maybe you have an image, a background image you want to add. Um, you can basically click on add image file and then whatever image you have whether you can add it i think i'm just going to add one of the um, images that we are using for uh, i think it's required that you use like a very small minimum image like an image that is not big um, over there so let's go see whether we have a very beautiful image somewhere in my apps I don't think I do. Do, 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 Okay, I think this image looks, no, it will spoil the design. Um, basically, you can, you know, add an image or you can even fill this background. Um, let's go check which background will be cool. Mm -mm. Okay. Let's select a background that will be cool. A background that will be cool. No. Uh, background background oh let me quickly end this episode very quick one so that we can move on but basically i want you to know that you can add all this stuff now when we click on the nest or even both of them what we want to do when it is selected we go to the action and then we say that we should navigate to the browse screen okay so that will do that and even when the person selects on the nest as a whole we want to still navigate to the browse screen one okay cool now let's go back to our home tab let's preview this app this app when someone click on the, it takes you to the browse screen you can basically clear up add new ones and all those stuff so this is a cool way of building an app um, with microsoft power apps if you have any question please put it in the chat and let me answer you very quickly whilst we end the session uh do i still have all of you on here or was i doing it my way am i alone did you lost me for once um is there anyone available to let me know whether any question came up so you can visit this url to get started um with tons of videos that is recorded by the community also on twitter um you can tweet about this session whatever you feel you can tweet and let us know whether you actually enjoy the session or not um so you can uh thank you so much for joining in today um to learn about power apps alongside with me um uh, you can do mixed reality. You can do a lot of things on, on your own. Um, hello. Um, is there anyone here to let me know if we 
like we didn't have any questions, so we proceed. I mean, we end the episode here because I'm basically done with all my demos. Uh, so that would uh, actually we don't have any questions. So I'll add the anchor. We'll be ending the session now. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for having me. And this is my channel. And if you want to find me anywhere, just type this Dao Degrees, whether on my website, Twitter, uh, YouTube, Facebook, wherever, GitHub, just type Dao Degrees. You should find me. Yeah, I've shared all the links that you have shared with me. I've shared it with the participants. Okay. So, uh, just a minute. I'll we'll wait for one to two minutes. Like uh, we'll wait if there are any questions, and if not, we'll wrap up the session. Cool. Um, do you have any questions to ask on behalf of the user yourself? Yeah. So actually, regarding the student ambassador program, I actually had a question to you. So. If suppose I apply for a student ambassador, right? Mm -hmm. So will it be for the next, like it will be for the next uh, session, right? Like if I uh, apply yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you apply now, it will be for the next um, recruitment uh, session, and I think that should be like in a month or so. Yeah, for every three months, they recruit the uh, student ambassador program recruits a new, like new ambassador. So. That should do it. Uh, so if you apply now in the next three months, your application will be reviewed. And then if you accepted, you get an email. Yeah, if you don't mind, can you just uh, tell the participants how this uh, M student ambassador works, like the alpha, beta part, like what it is exactly? Oh, OK. So basically, um, the student ambassador community is uh, Microsoft's um students you know microsoft sponsored program and it's for microsoft so um students are recruited you basically at the university level students are recruited worldwide and then um once they are recruited they are empowered with you know many benefits for example microsoft azure and office 365 and all the tools that they need to you know be learning and exploring um, the industrial world whilst they are in school. They are also giving like, you know, we are also giving support from, you know, Microsoft's um, MVPs and also um, Microsoft's employees come and then they, they teach us technology stuff. So we have a lot of benefit over there. We go for um, annual summits and we receive a lot of support. Uh, basically, we have different levels of Microsoft Learn Ambassadors. We have the beta, we have the gold learn ambassadors okay so um basically if you are a gold learn ambassador that is like the highest rank of you know um it's like the highest level of being an ambassador and if you're beta that is like the second highest and then we have generally ambassadors um as well so uh, our main job is to help people learn more like provide a lot of resources like you see videos that we are doing, the sessions we are running are all voluntary things to make the world a better place, to empower more people to achieve more. Yeah, that was great. Thanks for letting me know about it. So yeah. now okay. we'll move forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me today. I think I should turn, off, turn on my camera finally so you're able to see me. Yeah, that was a wonderful session, and we are very thankful to you for your valuable time and your valuable information sharing with us. Thanks a lot for being here today. Welcome. I'm excited. Thank you for hosting me today. Enjoy your day. Yeah, have a great day ahead. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.